Hi, I'm Steve Finn, and you're at the stage now where you're probably either about to enter or in the negotiation phase to actually sell your business. Over the years, I've been involved in, I guess, thousands of um, transactions where people are buying and selling businesses, and I've picked up a lot of things along the way. So I wanted to share some tips with you now that can really help you uh, be able to get the best outcome for yourselves, given that you're now selling your business. Okay, so here's some things that I've picked up. Um, the first thing is having a middleman. I really recommend having a middleman. Um, it's just a great opportunity to have someone who is a buffer between the two parties. Um, I've been in a situation personally where I actually sold one of my businesses and just with where I was at the time and the growth of our fin business, I was the only one really locally who could do it. So I had to do it myself. And um, it wasn't a good experience. And I lost a lot of leverage um, in the negotiations because I had no one in between, it was only me. And I'd obviously had a lot of experience with it, but um, you can't replace having a good middleman. So I would definitely recommend that to make sure you get the best outcome. The second thing is that I've probably picked up along the way is just to let the buyers have a few wins. So it doesn't need to be big things. I would just make sure that um, you make sure you, that you understand their mindset and their, their point of view. Um, overall, the thing that they're really looking for is that they want to feel that they got the better side of the deal. So you need to understand that that's where they're coming from and it's not a battle. It shouldn't be you versus them. By you having this knowledge, you can actually control the negotiation and make sure that you actually get your business sold and you get your money. And part of that is letting them have a few wins. And there'll be plenty of opportunities for wins. It might be in the amount of the deposit that they pay. It might be some flexibility on the date they sign the contract. It might be flexibility around the days that it takes to get finance. It might be some flexibility with the settlement date or some things to do with the plant and equipment in your business. There's a lot of opportunities you'll have to give them a few wins along the way. And my advice is to definitely make sure that you do. The more little wins that you give them, the more they'll trust you, stay in the transaction, and it'll, it won't become a battle. As soon as it's a battle of you versus them, um, even if they've signed up, uh, there's, a, there's a, a strong chance that they can walk away. Now, they might then have already paid a deposit, etc. but remember, it doesn't matter until they are in that business on the day that you've handed them over the keys and they've paid you all the money, it's not a done deal. So you've got to do everything you can to protect this deal along, along the way. Another thing um, that I think is good to have in your mind is to keep in mind the big picture. So what I'm talking about here is it's not only just the transaction that happens now when this person is looking to buy your business, but it's also how it fits in with the rest of your life, like what you're going to do next, when you're going to go do it, um, you know, the money side of things, your own well-being. Often when people are selling their business, it's because they've had enough. So um, you want to make sure you protect the deal because if a deal falls over uh, or you can't come to an agreement now and you have to start again, sometimes it can take another three or six or 12 months even to actually then find a new buyer. And in that time, you might actually have a whole change of mindset on the price that you're willing to let the business go for. So I'll give you sort of an example here as to what uh, is likely to happen to you so you'll know then how to react to that um, if and when that does happen. So I've drawn up a bit of a situation here where say your business is on the market, in this case I've used the example of 499000 Now you might have in your mind that, okay, yeah, you know you're willing to negotiate but um, you don't want to go any lower than four fifty. So typically what's going to happen is um, when your business is on the market, if someone's interested in buying it, they'll normally they'll put in an offer. There's normally a bit of a to and fro and to and fro. And then quite often you'll end up at a point where there's a stalemate. So the example I've used here is you've had in your mind you don't want to take under 450 and then they've done some negotiations, etc. and they've got to the point where they don't want to go over 440. So here we are and we're not meeting, we're just this far apart and we're $10,000 apart. So... The message I want to get across to you here is that in this part of the negotiation, you need to take the lead. You need to be the leader in the negotiations because this person that's purchasing your business, from their point of view, they're probably quite new at it. They're probably a novice at purchasing businesses. Not many people have purchased many businesses. And even if you've purchased three, you're by no means a professional. So 
most people have purchased maybe none or one or two. So either way, um, you need to be able to take the lead, which is why I'm giving you this advice. So the things to think of here is you're at a $10,000 difference. In your mind, you'll think that they're kind of ripping you off. They're trying to take that money from you and get, a, and get it, that money from you. You can't really look at it like that. The way to look at it is more at the big picture. What happens if you guys don't come to an agreement now? What happens if they then walk away? Because if that does occur, for the sake of $10,000, you might have to start all over again and then wait and find someone else. And as I said before, you might be then six or 12 months down the track and then you decide, oh look, I'll put the business on the market for 350 or 400. And believe me, I've seen it happen plenty of times. And that's the path that you sort of head down. So my advice is, if you get like this, you be the one who then takes the lead and just do the deal at like 440 that they're happy with. Because that extra $10,000 difference, just say to yourself, that's fine, I'll make that up in my next venture. Or it'll give me the ability to move on to my next venture and, and um, enjoy what I'm going to do next because I want to move myself out of here. Because $10,000 in the overall scheme of things, if you put that over you know, a five or a 10 year period or whatever, it, it's minor, it doesn't really matter. You can, make up, you can make it up quite easily. So I use that example for you. Another thing um, probably that I've picked up along the way in terms of the tips for in this negotiation stage is just understand uh, their view, understand their view as a buyer and what they're going through. Um, it's actually quite, um, it's, it's actually hard to find buyers. So when you've got someone that's interested, I think the more you can understand them, the better. I'll give you some examples here. Like they're, they're getting influenced and they're talking when they're not talking to you or to your fin broker, they're talking to their accountant, they're talking to probably their neighbour, their spouse, their bank, and I'll give you some examples of what they're hearing. When they're talking to their neighbour, say for example, having a barbecue, having a beer, they'll be there saying, oh, you're looking at buying this business. And a lot of people, for some reason, you know, want to look to sort of uh, evaluate and justify um, things. So they'll say, oh, what are you going to pay for it? And I'll say, oh, you know, we've got to offer in at 440. And they'll often go, oh, it seems pretty expensive for that sort of a business, you know? So they're copying some negativity that way. Accountants, their accountant, no matter what the person's looking to buy the business at, you can bet their accountant saying it's too much. Because the accountant doesn't want to be involved and be to endorse the purchase. Because if it turns out they get into the business and they muck it up, and they're not making the money they thought of, the accountant doesn't want to be the one that feels part of the blame. So the accountant's always going to be erring on the side of caution there. So they're getting a bit of negative pressure from their accountant. A lot of people put their accountant on, the, on a pedestal. So that's the sort of thing that's happening. Their spouse, their spouse is worried because they're investing money, they're putting the house on the line, they're borrowing more money, all this sort of stuff. It's a whole new venture. And their spouse is worried what that could do to their personal finances and what it could do to their family dynamic as well. So there's a, they're getting that sort of worry and then the other thing is the bank. The bank might be saying, look, you want to borrow this money to buy this business. Look, we're happy to lend you with your personal situation and the kind of debt you can carry because you've still got your house and mortgage, etc. We're happy to lend you up to 420 or up to 400 for the business. You've got to come up with the other money yourself. So you just don't know what they're hearing from all of these different things. You've got to understand their point of view. So sometimes their negotiations around this price is not always around just trying to um, screw, screw the best deal they can out of you who's actually selling that. It's more around um, the other pressures that they're feeling and making sure getting themselves into a point of comfort. So there's some tips that I'd like to pass across to you. Uh, now you're in the negotiation stage to be able to sell your business and I hope we're able to really be an important part of that for you and get a really good result.